Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am the Night Walker and tonight I want to talk about the 1991 movie The Addams Family. Now we got two things you know heading our way. First of all we got a brand new animated movie The Addams Family coming up which of course I'm going to look I'm going to check it out because I love The Addams Family. And uh, second we finally you know so I have the first movie here on Blu-ray Finally, after so many years, finally, Adam's Family Values is going to be, you know, getting a Blu-ray release here at the 1st of October, just in time for Halloween, so that's going to be awesome. Now, if we can just get, you know, a release on uh, Adam's Family Reunion, because even though that's definitely not the best in the Adam's Family series, for me, just to see Tim Curry as Gomez and, and Daryl Hannah as Morticia, for me, that's worth it alone, and um, no disrespect to Angelica Houston here, but it's like if I had to pick just my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, only my opinion, but if I had to pick who my choice for the sexiest uh, Morticia would be, I'd probably have to say it'd have to be Daryl Hannah. That's just my opinion. Anyway, though, so yeah, I mean, just, uh, well, I said last week when I did my video on uh, season season one, of episode one of Lucifer, that I wanted to start talking about some of my favorite TV shows. and. The Addams Family has been one of my favorite shows since birth. And now, here's the thing, okay? If you keep an open mind, folks. I mean, if you've seen these movies and you love these movies, watch the old TV show. I have the complete series of it up there, okay? Watch the old TV show. It's a lot of fun. I mean, sure, it's a product of its time. It's in black and white, but it's a lot of fun. The episodes are a lot of fun to watch, and, you know, and so is this. And um, I would say if I had one criticism to make about this is just that um, it's fun. It's it's kind of it's supposed to be kind of like dark humor and stuff, but it, it still has kind of like this a little bit of a light feel to it. I would like to see a version of the Adams Family that just goes a little bit darker. Um, I remember at one point I I remember reading something about like they were trying to see if maybe. I think it was Paramount or Warner Brothers or somebody. They were trying to see if maybe they could get Tim Burton interested in directing a, you know, directing like a reboot of it. And if Johnny Depp might have been interested in playing Gomez, that could be lies. That's just what I remember reading. But, but anyway, though, this movie came out in 1991. And I remember my brother and I, we went to go see in the theater and we had a blast. I had so much fun watching this movie. Um, the storyline is pretty simple. It's, you know. You got the Ann family, but the problem is, is they're missing Uncle Fester, who's played by Christopher Lloyd here. I do remember, though, um, now that I think about it, I'm looking at Thing. That's one thing I do remember them saying in the interviews and the commentary on the old TV show, though, was that um, Thing was not just in the original comic strip by Charles Adams. Thing was not just a hand. Thing was supposed to be attached to something. But um, you just never knew what it was. So... So they were they were saying that was that kind of deviated from the comic strip that um, thing turns out just to be the severed hand that's running around everywhere. But so anyway, so you know you have the Anne's family, you have Gomez here played by the late great Raúl Julia. <sighs> He's so good in this, um, as he was a lot of things. But anyway, so. You know, he's upset because, you know, his brother, Fester, that was like a difference too. If if you ever watch, like if you watch these movies and then you watch the old TV show, there is a difference how Uncle Fester is related to the family. Because in this movie version, Uncle Fester is actually the brother of Gomez. Whereas if you watch the old TV series, Uncle Fester is actually the uncle of Morticia, who comes to live with them and stay with them. So there is there are some little differences between the TV show and the movie, but nothing that would nothing in my opinion that would actually really like take you out of the take you out of the movies or anything. Nothing that would ruin the, the TV series or the movies for you. Just little differences. But but anyway though, so Uncle Fester, he's been gone for a long time and they don't know what's going on. They're worried. Um, you know, of course you got the great jokes in this movie, like um, you know where uh, go or uh, Morticia is talking to a friend of hers and she's talking about, you know, Oh my God. Yeah. He's coughing up blood. Is he coughs up blood? Well, not like he used to, <laughs> but um, you know, I totally, I totally love the humor in this. And uh, one thing that, you know, I do admit, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here for, 
tangent here for a second. Whew, oh man, one thing that uh, I admit kind of bugs me is when you know you get like is like when you post a joke on social media that is definitely like something the Adams family would say or something like a like a joke that they would make. And then people, you know, even though they claim that they watch the Adams family or they know the you know, they get the humor and stuff. They don't get the joke. You know, it's something definitely like because I remember like one time a couple of years ago, I had uh, got like a box of the um, the brown, you know, little Debbie come around the holidays. They always put out like the snack cakes and stuff like one thing they always put out are the brownies that are shaped like bats. So I made a joke on social media about, you know, yeah, I'm really disappointed in these. You know, they don't taste anything like bats, like real bats. And then, you know, somebody came back and was like, what are you talking about? It's like, you talking about like Ozzy Osbourne or something? It's like, no, that was kind of more like a, that was kind of more like a joke, kind of like what the Adams family would do or kind of like what the Crypt Keeper would do, that kind of thing. So it's like, I do have that kind of sense of humor. But anyway, let's get back to the story. So they're trying to figure it out. And then it turns out that there's this doctor or this woman who uh, she knows this family lawyer. Let me rephrase that. There is this man named Tully. He is the family lawyer to the Adams family. And now this guy, he's like, you know, owes a lot of people a lot of money and stuff. And one thing he wants more than anything, he knows that the Adams family have more money they could, they could ever spend, more wealth than you could possibly imagine. And uh, in the movie, they don't really say where, that's like another little difference. In the movie, they don't really say like how... They came to amass this fortune. They just have it. Whereas like on the TV show, it was uh, it was established that Gomez was a whiz at the stock market. He could play the stock market all day and he just kept making more and more money no matter whatever. And he would always like invest his money in the weirdest things like lint or something like that. You know, there's like a there's like a like a dirt company or something. I want to invest my money in that. And somehow or another, the man always made money. He just always had this massive fortune. He always had way more money. Than he, the family always had way more money they could spend. But anyway, so Tully, he wants to get his hands on the Adams family fortune. And so, you know, he, um, and it turns out that there's this woman, I'm going to be getting into some spoilers here. So I may as well say it now. Spoilers. So he ends up meeting this woman and this woman, she has this, son, if you want to call that, Gordon, who we actually come to find out is Uncle Fester. And so, you know, she's, you know, telling Tolly that he owes her money. And he's like, I've been trying, you know, I've been trying to, you know, get my way to the Adams fortune. They got more money than anybody and all this stuff. And he drops the hint that, you know, they're looking for Uncle Fester. And so this, you know, lady, she decides, that her and Gordon, they're going to put up this. Well, Tolly first notices that, that, you know, this Gordon, he bears a very strong resemblance to uncle Fester. The only difference was he has hair. So, you know, they, they both conjure up this plan that they're going to shave, you know, Gordon's head. He's going to go in there and he's going to, you know, pass himself off as uncle Fester. So, you know, this starts, they start in with this and this woman, you know, you know, she poses herself off as a doctor you know, and she's like this, she's supposed to be his psychiatrist and she's helping him and all this stuff. And so Fester gets in there and, and, you know, he's, you know, that's the thing. Fester has been away from the Adam family for so long that, you know, he's, you know, more used to the outside world and he's, you know, not really, you know, he doesn't know how things work around there. So, you know, and the one who becomes the most suspicious of him is little Wednesday here. Now, Christina Ritchie, we'll get to her in a minute, but, um, but, you know, little bit by little bit, he's starting to kind of like, um, he's starting to try to figure things out. But at the same time, Gomez is really going through a crisis because, you know, he doesn't, as far as he's concerned, this isn't Fester. It doesn't feel like Fester. It doesn't act like Fester. He's, you know, kind of all over the place with it. And so this woman who's posing herself off as a doctor, she keeps coming in and trying to, you know, tell him, no, this is Fester. He's your brother, this and that, and, you know. But meanwhile, they keep trying to get to this fortune and stuff like that. And um, ultimately, she and Tully figure out a deal that um, they could get the Adams family out of the house and say that Fester is actually the one who owns the house and that they could have the home and all to themselves. And But as the movie progresses, you know, Gordon 
slash fester starts to really build a bond with the family, particularly Wednesday and Pugsley. And he starts to become more, um, you know, become more with the family and stuff. And so, you know, he becomes really depressed. And so one part in this movie that is incredibly, incredibly funny, I mean, it's just so funny, is when the Adams family move out of their home and they move into a motel in town. And the problem is, is like they try to fight this in court. But the problem is, is the judge is the Adam family next door neighbor. And Gomez has this habit of, you know, when he's swinging golf or, or he's swinging his golf club, hitting golf balls, practicing, the golf balls always keep smashing the judge's windows and breaking his windows and stuff. And Gomez just keeps up, just send me the bill, judge, you know, send me the bill. I'll pay for it. Just send me the bill and stuff. Or you could keep the golf ball. I got plenty of them and stuff. And the guy's like, damn you, Adams. So, so of course, they end up getting this judge. And, you know, he's all like, you know, yeah, Fester gets the house. And he's like, oh, by the way, Gomez, he pours out, you know, a bucket full of golf balls. I believe these are yours, you know. So they're living in this hotel or motel at one point, And you got some of the funniest jokes there where, you know, Gomez, he's really, really in a deep funk, a really deep depression because they don't know what to do. And, you know, like at one point he's, you know, just sitting there just eating snack food and cookies and all this chips and everything else and um you know at one point morticia says gomez i think you're really upset let's all go out for a family drive he's like go out for a drive and miss gilligan and then like another uh, one part i admit really really cracked me up cracked me up was a part where he watches um he's watching sally jesse Raphael. And, they're, and she's doing a show about, you know, Wiccans and witchcraft and stuff like that. She's like, let's take a call. And he's like, hello, Sally. And she's like, Mr. Adams, would you please stop calling here? We don't know where they meet. And he's like, <laughs> you know, so I mean, oh, man. And then you got like, they're trying to make money. Um, Morticia says, you know, we need to try to build our fortune back up. So she's like trying to become a nanny and a daycare and all this other kind of stuff. Um you know, Wednesday at Pugsley, they're out front, they're trying to sell lemonade, this girl, you know, classic scene. If you've seen the movie, you already know what I'm talking about. I just can't help it. I love this movie. So, you know, this girl comes up, she's got a box of Girl Scout cookies, and she's all like, you know, is that made from real lemons? And he's, you know, of course, they got like balls that says like poison and arsenic and, you know, skull and crossbones on the bo- on the labels and stuff. And there's a, yes. You know, she's all like, you know, I only drink, you know, lemonade if it's made from fresh lemons and all this stuff. And they're just like, yes. She's like, I'll make you a deal. I'll buy a glass of your lemonade if you buy one of my um, delicious box of Girl Scout cookies. And Christina Ritchie, her line is the best ever. You know, she says, are they made from real Girl Scouts? <laughs> See, that's what I say. I love the humor in this. And I have that kind of same sense of humor myself. I love doing that stuff. But anyway, so um morticia we hit into the third act morticia decides she needs to go and confront fester see if this is how he truly feels because you know i think morticia is kind of like the only one who really notices that you know fester seems really conflicted and he seems like he's being manipulated by this woman this doctor's supposed to be his mother and so she goes to you know she goes to uh see him and thing follows and and notice that she's going to be in trouble so so it goes back, wakes up um, Gomez, and, and, you know, finally he's able to get the message to Gomez that, you know, Morticia's going to be in danger. So he goes to save her, and then, you know, we get to the climax, and, um, you know, we real, the um, they're getting ready to go down and get the fortune and all that stuff. They've had enough of it, and they're talking about they're going to kill Morticia if, you know, Gomez doesn't go along with it. And then, um, you know, Fester, you know, he decides, because the woman is verbally abusing him and berating him all the time and stuff and she's calling him an idiot and, you know i should left you where i found you and all this other kind of stuff and so go or uh, fester he's all like you know not so fast gomez and then you know he's like you you're picking the wrong book you know if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about but anyway he takes the book gone with the wind and it turns out like whenever they open the book the books come to life so he's open so like all this wind is blowing and all this stuff and so it's like tolly and and uh the doctor, they're being blown completely out of the house. And, you know, they fall in these two open graves. It turns out, and then the camera pans up and you see um, Wednesday and Pugsley standing there with shovels. And Pugsley says, are they dead? And one of Wednesday's best lines, does it matter? <laughs> you know, so 
anyway, though, and then at the end of the movie, you know, we got they're celebrating Halloween, which is their favorite time of year. And it's the same thing on the on the TV show as well. You know, you know, they celebrate other uh, holidays. That was like one difference. Another little difference, though, too, because in the movie, we open up with the classic. OK, one of the most classic comic strips of the Adams Family ever is there's a strip of you got these Christmas carolers singing in front of um, the Adams Family's home. And then like up kind of like on the balcony, you have, you know, I think it's uh, it's uh, Lurch and, and Gomez. They're about ready to pour boiling liquid on them. So that's like they're the most classic one. And the movie opens up the same way. The, the beginning of the movie opens up that way. So that was a great way to pay, pay tribute to the classic uh, classic comic strip. But oh, man. I love this movie, though. It's really great. Like I said, that's the only thing I kind of really wish would happen would be that if we could get a, a version of the Adams Family where the humor is just a little bit darker, it's just a little bit edgier. You know, you don't have to go into full blown like, you know, horror movie torture porn territory or anything like that. But just something where it's just kind of like a little more. I don't know if you want to say mean spirited or just a little more intense or whatever, but I think you get the idea of what I'm saying, though. But this movie now that's the thing though too is what's interesting it's like a lot of movies that are based on tv shows they're not good a lot of movies a lot of tv shows don't translate well to film um you know i mean you could sit here you could think about it i mean there are a lot of people like you know a lot of people would say like oh my god yeah remember they tried to make starsky and hutch a lot of people hated the dukes of hazard movie a lot of people hated um you know like the you know, it was like when Drew Barrymore redid Charlie's Angels and stuff. You know, I was like, now they got another one of those coming out. So, I mean, you know, it's like TV shows a lot of the times do not translate well to film. And this is a case of it. They pulled it off, which unfortunately, OK, look at like the Munsters. I do not know how many times they've tried to reboot the Munsters over the years as TV series, as movies. Although I'm surprised they haven't tried to do a theatrical movie of it yet. Watch now that I said something, they probably will, but, you know. Um, but they've tried so many times to try to reboot the Munsters, either in a movie form or a TV version form or something, and it never works. This actually works. They pulled it off here. I don't know what formula they were able to figure out, but it does. It This works very well. You have a great cast on here. I have to admit, in the beginning, before I saw the movie, I was a little... I was a little reluctant about um, Christopher Lloyd playing Uncle Fester because I watched the TV show, so I knew Jackie Coogan is like, well, Christopher Lloyd's not really, you know, he's not really fat and bald and all this kind of stuff. Where you know that's Uncle Fester, but lo and behold, I mean, being the great character actor that he is, Christopher Lloyd, he pulls it off, and he's great. He's so fantastic in this movie. He does a wonderful job. Raul Julia, may he rest in peace. But I have to admire the flair that he put into this role the i mean he attacked this role with gusto and he you could tell i mean he is his performance is so animated and he is just so just i don't know if he was but he looked like he was having a ball making this movie and if he was good for him you know but i mean he just seems like watching this movie he seems like he is having the time of his life playing that character and maybe he was i hope he was um, unfortunately, the, uh, what was her name? Judith. Unfortunately, they don't say the actress's name, but who played the, um, the grandmother, grandmama. Unfortunately, was it Judith? I don't remember. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away. So like they couldn't get her for Adam's family values, but they didn't do too bad, though. They followed her up with Carol Kane, so you can't complain about that. Jimmy Workman, I thought, did a serviceable job as uh, Pugsley. Um, Carl Strike in this Lurch. He ended up playing Lurch in both the this one and Family Values. And then he even turned around and played Lurch. He was like the only returning cast member for Adam Family Reunion. But I mean Christina Ritchie, like Raul Julia, she approached this. I mean, she went at it full force. And she did a wonderful job. I mean, oh my god. I knew. I mean, like when I was a kid, you know, yeah, I was already into horror movies and monster movies and things like that. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, of course I liked her in the movie, but I knew guys, like even my brother, even he wasn't into horror movies and stuff like that, but he started crushing on her. You know, she ended up becoming a, 
it was weird because I mean, to a lot of people, it's like she's, you know, she would to a lot of people, she would definitely be like the um, the definition of like goth emo and all that kind of stuff. But I knew guys, they were not, they did not like horror movies. They didn't like, you know, gothic stuff or any of that. They were not into any of that stuff. But man, oh man, they ended up, they got a hell of a crush on Christina Ritchie from this movie alone that pretty much continued to follow through the rest of their lives. But there was something about her performance in this movie that just, you know, the boys, the boys fell in love with her. So, and Angelica Houston, I have no complaints about her, her portrayal as Morticia. I think she did a great job. I love the way, I love her line de delivery. I love the way, you know, she says things and just, you know, she just, oh my God, there's no weak link in the acting of this movie. Um, like I said, it's just, ah, uh, it's wonderful. I highly recommend it. This is a perfect movie. Watch it at Halloween time, you know. Oh yeah, it's perfect. You know, I can't I can't think of anything bad to say about this. The only thing I would just say though is like, you know, if you love this and you love the Adams family values, you know, and you're excited to see, you know, the the um you know, the animated movie that's coming up, if you haven't checked it out, do yourselves a favor. You know, it's like 20 bucks at Walmart. Get the complete series of the Adams Family, the original TV show, you're gonna love it. I mean, get past the black and white, you're gonna love it. It's a great show, it's a lot of fun, it's as much fun as these. And that's the thing, you know, it's like, I just love dark humor, I love, you know, that kind of, you know, macabre sense of humor and stuff like that. So yeah, this is just, for me, this is a, a fun film. This is a great family movie, but um, also too, if you know, you know somebody like, that's like another thing though too you know you could use this movie as like an introduction to getting people into you know becoming interested in horror if you're a horror fan and you know people who are not horror fans this could be a good stepping stone to start getting them on the path to you know becoming a horror fan so but it's a lot of fun humor is great oh i can't say enough good things about it i think it's time for me to it's been over 20 minutes now and i keep going on and on talking about how much i love it but the movie's great the TV show is magnificent. If you haven't checked it out, I really highly recommend you see it. And um, yeah, I finally, well, if you see here, I got the uh, double feature DVD of, you know, and Family, and Family Values. So I already got my, I already have my uh, Blu-ray for, you know, and Family Values pre-ordered. So I got it coming. So can't wait, can't wait. So glad to have that. So um, yeah. I love the Adams Family. I could watch Adams Family all day. That's that's like one of my comfort shows. I can binge watch that forever. So, and the Monsters too. I do love the Monsters. So anyway, that's going to do it. Um, if anybody took the time to watch all this, I thank you for doing it, and I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe. There'll be weekly videos posted. And now that I talked about, like I said, I'm going to start doing some of my favorite TV shows. So. Get ready because I'm gonna have a um, I'm gonna have a review of uh, episode one of season one of Adam's Family coming up probably in the next day or two. So anyway, um, take care. This is Horror Heaven seventy seven. I am the Night Walker, and uh, you might want to be careful. You might see me out strolling about at night. <laughs>